Amen. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to 1 Peter. Amen. 1 Peter uh, chapter 2. And we're going to read verses uh, 9 and 10. It says, but ye, I'm talking to you, youth, I'm talking to you, elders, are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. Somebody say, we're a peculiar people. We're different. We're not going to blend in out there. Amen. That ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Which in time past were not a peop- were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had obtained mercy, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Amen. And now let's go to First Peter chapter three and verse nine. So the next page, if you have a small Bible, it says, "Not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing." Somebody say blessing. Knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. Uh, did I put verse 10? Nope, we only got. Uh, all right, now go to Romans chapter 6 and verse 13. Amen. Romans 6 13. I had a lot of scriptures on my heart, so really this, this isn't a lot for tonight, but. Romans chapter 6, verse 13 says, Neither yield ye your members, in other words, your hands, your feet, your eyes, your lips, as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive. We are alive from the dead. And your members as instruments of righteousness to God. James chapter 4. I don't know if I put that one up, so we'll just go ahead and... uh, Stick with James chapter 4 and verse 7, and that says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Let's go before the Lord. God, we give you the praise and glory, Lord. God, this is about you. This is not about me. So I pray, Lord, that you'd anoint these lips of clay to speak to your people. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise, Jesus. Have your way in this place. Let your word be proclaimed in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. He is worthy. Amen. You may be seated. You know that that every time you do a work for the kingdom of God, that every time somebody is baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, every time you preach the gospel to somebody, This is what the devil looks like. Amen. You see him screaming there in a rage? That's what that devil looks like. Amen. Tonight, I'm going to preach on this thought. You are chosen to rebel against hell. Amen. Now, I'm totally against rebellion. Amen. And the word rebellion means an act of violent or open resistance to an established government or ruler. This is the way that Wikipedia says it. Rebellion, here's a synonym for rebellion, uprising or insurrection is a refusal of obedience or order. It it refers to open resistance against the orders of an established authority. The term comes from the Latin verb rebello, which means I renew war. The the rebel is an individual that partakes in rebellion or rebellious activities, particularly when armed. You don't always have to have a gun to rebel, but some of us do. just depends on what kind of a rebel you are, and I hope we don't have any rebellious souls unless it's for the kingdom of God. Satan's rebellion is what got him kicked out of heaven because he said within his heart that he was going to exalt his throne above the stars of God. I, I, how, how idiotic is that? He, I, I picture him hitting himself in the head with a hammer. Boom, boom. I exalt myself against God. I am bigger than God. Amen. Amen. That's what, that's what I picture because it, it, it's idiotic to rebel 
against God and he wanted to exalt his throne above God. He said in his heart that I'm going to ascend above the heights of the clouds to be like the most high. None of us are like the most high. So since Satan wanted to be God, God's given him an obvious kingdom known as the kingdom of hell. Amen. Satan and a third of the angels of God were kicked out of heaven because they, they made a bad choice. Because they chose to be rebellious. If there is anything that heaven and hell have in common, if there is one thing that they share in common, both of them are out to win souls. Amen. If you serve the kingdom of God, you're wanting to bring the world out there into the house of God, into the body of Christ. But if you're a devil from hell, you're wanting to pull people out of the body of Christ and down into hell. And you're not worried about the people that aren't in the body of Christ because they already belong to you. But it is your job to distract them. Amen. But thank God we're, we serve the kingdom of God. Satan's kingdom is the one that influ influences immortality. No, no, no. Immorality. Excuse me. We influence immortality. This influences immorality. Uh, the it influences the negativity, the violence, the sinfulness, and the rebellion of this, wor of this world. In other words, they like to sin, and they take pleasure in it. And every time that a person of God sins, or every time someone in out in that world is influenced to sin, they get a kick out of it. And I bet you some of the stuff that we think is awesome, some of the stuff that we think is great, I bet you the kingdom of hell laughs at us for doing it. Amen. Am I telling the truth or what? Amen. Amen. When God's creation, when God's creation makes bad choices, it is because uh, they are influenced. It's kind of like this. When I was a kid, I always got a kick out of two dogs that are staring each other down. Have you ever seen two dogs and, and, and they're just ready to fight and they're staring at each other down? They're looking at each other in the face like, and, and they're ready to go at it. But when I was a kid and I would see two dogs like that, what I would do is I'd stand there and watch. I'd, I'd pick up a rock and I, I'd just watch them get closer to each other. Then I'd throw it. And they, they, start, they start fighting like crazy. Amen. And I, I thought that was the biggest thing. I'm like, man, look at what I made those dogs do. Amen. Amen. And that's what Hal wants to do. They want nothing more than to stir up sin in your life. And they want to take credit for it. And they point at, and laugh at God's creation and say, look, I made those dogs fight. Amen. Did you know that the devil doesn't like you? The devil don't like you one bit. And you might like him, but he don't like you. To, you. to him, you're just a dog. He didn't die for you. But if, you don't, if you're not careful enough, he's going to die with you. Amen. But he, he didn't die for you. And... Uh, so to, to how the icing on the cake is when an unsaved individual who lived under the influence of sin dies and goes to hell. I remember when I used to be influenced by hell and I wanted to be rebellious. I wanted to make a name for myself. I was just another loser who wanted attention, who wanted people to look at him. It's different from back from back then. Now, I stand here because I have a commission from God. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. But back then, I, I, was, I was doing everything for a different reason. I was trying to make a name for myself. And I had uh, an attitude that nobody can tell me what to do. That I could do what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it. And nobody could tell me it would be different. I remember in high school, I used, to, I used to smoke cigarettes in school, and I used to smoke weed in school. And uh, every time I'd get caught on camera or, or by a teacher or, or somebody would go rat me out, uh, I made friends with the security guards. So I'd ask the security guards, hey, hey bro, will, will you hold on to my cigarettes, bro, and uh, hold on to my, to my brass knucks while you take me to the office? Uh, they, they're wanting to search my pockets. And uh, every, time, every time they decided... Uh, to pull me into the principal's office, they'd pat me down and search my pockets, and they'd find nothing, so they'd have to let me go. Man, I felt like the baddest dude in the world when that happened. 
I'd get out of the principal's office like, yes, I'm free. I <laughs> take that. I'm bad. <laughs> Amen. That's that's what I thought. That's what I thought. And there was times where I got in trouble too. So uh, I, I'm not proud of that stuff. I, I just look back and laugh at myself like, man, what was I doing with my life? What was the point of it? <laughs> Amen. And there was times where I, I would want to impress my friends. So I would go up. Uh, this is kind of dumb, forgive me, I would go start fights for no reason. I'd go up to somebody and I'd hit them in the face for no reason. And my so-called friends would praise me for it. They'd be like, bro, that was sick, good one, man, that was awesome. And I'd be like, yeah, what's up, bro? <laughs> you, know what I, you know what I mean? And that's that's just what I was trying to do. I, I was just trying to get popular. I, I, I'd have somebody come up to me like, man, I, I saw you get in, I saw you get in a fight the other day in front of Smith's, man. That guy was beating you up. That guy was drunk, and uh, that happened to be the one time I, I decided to leave my brass nooks at home. <laughs> and uh, that guy, I was fighting with this drunk guy. I got mad at him because he was swerving in the parking lot, and uh, we, we, were, we were in the lobby, and he, he kind of chased me down like, what, bro, you, you got a problem? And we started fighting, I fell to the floor, and I, I was kicking out his face, and my stepdad was like, man, you could scrap. He was a black man. <laughs> you know? You know what I mean? But somebody else saw me, and they're like, man, he was beating you up. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? And, and I, was, I, was, I was rebellious like that. I, I just wanted uh, people to acknowledge me. That's how I made my friends. I, I could go over so much more. But, uh, but the point is, I acted that way because I wanted to p- people to think that I was bigger than I was. I was rebellious, but now I realize who I was about rebelling against. You see, I wasn't rebelling against mom and, and dad. and, and uh, I wasn't rebelling against authority, against the police. I was rebelling against God. God was the one looking down at me and saying, my child, I cannot wait to, for the day that you open up your heart to this word because it is going to change your life. But let me tell you something, church. Just because you are saved and living for God, doesn't mean that Satan and his angels aren't fighting and trying their hardest to influence you. If anything, what Satan and his kingdom are trying to do, they're trying to creep into the church. Satan and his kingdom are trying to keep creep into the church and they're wanting to dictate our actions. They're wanting to dictate the way we carry ourselves. They're wanting, they go up to you sometimes and whisper in your ear and saying, Man, pastor didn't answer his phone. He must not like you. Why don't you go tell somebody else about how much of a horrible pastor he is? Or so, some of us Pentecostals, this is what he wants to do. He doesn't want you to acknowledge somebody when they walk into the church. Here's what he wants you to do. He wants you to be like, look at my suit. Don't talk to me. You stink. Don't talk to me. You're smelly. Don't talk to me. I saw you walking out of out of the liquor store the other day. You're just an alcoholic. I, I don't want nothing to do with you. Amen. Satan's kingdom wants nothing more than to creep into this church and tear it down. They want somebody to walk into the house of God and they want them discouraged. So they're going to go up, up to you and they're going to go whisper into your ear, your ear and they're going to say, Hey, why don't, you, why don't you tell that person to, not to wear this today? Tell them not to wear that to the house of God. Tell them they can't be on their phone. Just go up to them and tell them something. Because what Satan is trying to do is that he is trying to discourage you from, from influencing that person to live for God. He wants that person to say, I'm never going back to the church because those Pentecostals are stuck up. That's what Satan wants you to do. Satan wants nothing more than to influence your life. Amen. You think he cares about you, but he doesn't. He wants to tear your life down. He's no good. He's the reason that we sin. He's the reason that Adam and Eve were influenced in that garden of Eden and that they chose to disobey God. He is the tempter. He is the one that lies to you. Every time you go out there, every time you decide to go party, every time you decide to go to those dances, every time you decide to sip on those booze, the devil's laughing at you. You might think you're having fun. You might think you're cool. But what the devil's doing is he's like, yes, I got him right in my trap. I've got him right in my trap. And he's, I just need him. All I need him to do is get shot or get into a car accident. And boom, he's my trophy. 
You weren't created for that purpose, but God gives you a choice. It's called free will, and you need to be willing to make that choice today because I'm telling you that you're not promised tomorrow. Moms and dads, you want to know what's worse than hell? It's seeing those babies of yours in hell and them looking at you and them saying, man, I trusted you to raise me. Every time you partied, mom and dad, every time you got high in front of me, mom and dad, uh, it, it caused trauma to me. It caused me brain damage. And I went out and I did the exact same thing. I'm telling you, if you ain't bringing your children to the house of God, if you ain't trying to get here on a Sunday or Wednesday, I'm telling you that the devil's got you right in his snare. He's got you right in his trap. That word snare means he has you by a leash. I'm telling you right now, you need to be rebellious against hell. You cannot resist the kingdom of heaven. We aren't called to be Satan's dogs. We're called to be in revival. We're called out there to go tell people about Jesus Christ. That is your life's purpose. You know that Jesus Christ died so you could receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Jesus Christ died so he could pour out his spirit into you. And so he could steer you up to good works. So he could help you put sin out of your life. That's what the Holy Ghost is for, is to conquer. And people will stand here and they're going to say, oh, uh, I don't, uh, my, my sins aren't that bad. I, I, I don't need to, I don't need to stop sinning. There's no way to overcome it. We're not perfect. My friend, I'm telling you, I'm not perfect. I probably sin every day. Every day I'm at my altar asking God, God, forgive me. But God's given you his spirit to conquer that sin. God's given you his spirit to overcome that sin. And all you need to do is receive it. Amen. Every time one of those evangelists comes to the house of God and he starts preaching something and he starts saying something that you don't like. Amen. If you will just receive the word of God, God has a blessing there for you. God wants to do a great thing in your life. We need to stop listening to that devil's voice. We need to start tuning out his voice and turning into the, tuning into the spirit of God. I think it's time. I think it's time, I think it's time for the church of the living God to arise and say, I'm no longer going to do what Satan wants me to do. I'm no longer going to talk how Satan wants me to talk. I'm no longer going to act how Satan wants me to act. I'm no longer going to give attention to devilish thoughts. I'm no longer going to use these hands and feet to commit devilish actions. If I'm going to be rebellious, if I'm going to be disobedient, if I'm going to resist anyone, let it be Satan and let it be his angels. Amen. I'm sick and tired of the devil wanting to influence me to do bad things. Since when did I want to be bossed around when I was in the world? Since when did I want to be to told what to do when I was rebelling against God? But God knows all things. God knows what's right. God has your whole life paved out for you. So why do you want to listen to that devil? And why do you want to listen to his preachers? You know the devil has preachers too. I remember when I used to listen to rap music, I used to listen to music about rebellion. Just like the word of God does today. Back then that rap music used to stir up my spirit. And I used to listen to a rapper say that. He would literally, he would literally call himself, a wolf amongst the sheep. And he would be talking about having music so loud that it would knock down the pictures off of his neighbor's walls. And he would be bragging about smelling him from a mile away like if he smells like uh, liquor and weed. And I had another rapper who I used to listen to and he'd say things like, we came to disturb the peace. I'm telling you right now, that music does disturb the peace. That music does disturb the elderly. That music does corrupt children. But I'm telling you what, if we're willing to just make some different kind of noise, if we're willing to just lift up the name of Jesus and give God some praise, I'm telling you what we're doing. We're stirring up the spirit realm. We're stirring up the kingdom of hell. We're pushing them out of the way because they cannot handle. They cannot handle when God's name is praised. You see that big bad lion right there crushing that serpent? God wants that to be you today. God told, since the book of Genesis, God said, I'm going to, he told Satan, I'm going to put division between my seed and your seed. In other words, his seed was going to be crushed by the 
feet of Jesus Christ. And then Jesus Christ comes to live in you. And then God gives you an authority over the enemy. You have the power to take up serpents. You have the power to say, no devil, leave me alone. In Jesus' name, get behind me. Amen. Back then when a new song would come out, I wasn't the type to listen to mainstream rap because it was too clean and too sweet and all that that powder puff cream cake stuff i wasn't into that stuff i was into underground music man and when and when a new song would come out i'd go up to my friends and be like man uh, check out this new song bro this song is bumping you know what i ought to do today i ought to go up to somebody and say hey man i know you're having a bad day but listen let me tell you about jesus christ and let me tell you about what he can do for you hey, amen i used to I used to be involved with music, and I'm not going to name labels. I'm not going to name, name artists. But I used to hand out their CDs, and I used to hand out their flyers. And I used to say, hey, man, make sure to pick up uh, this CD on November 11th. Man, he's coming out with another CD, and you're, you're going to like it, man. It's dope. That's what I used to do. But what if now I decide to be rebellious against hell? You see, hell doesn't like when you talk about the kingdom. Hell doesn't like when you get the gospel around. Why don't I take some tracks from that pamphlet holder right there, and why don't I start handing them out to people, Pastor Langford? Why don't I start handing them out to people, Sister Anna, and telling people the good news of the kingdom, and telling people that Jesus Christ is coming soon, and that we need to make our hearts ready for him? Amen. Somebody needs to be willing to rebel against hell. Somebody needs to be willing to make that devil mad every time you praise the name of Jesus. Every time you do a work for the kingdom of God. Amen. You're making hell angry. If you want to be rebellious, nobody cares about how rebellious you are in this world. Nobody cares about how low you want to sag your dickies and how much you want to smell like cigarettes and how bad you want to support those lokes. I'm telling you, they don't care about that. You're not bothering anybody. If anything, you're fitting in with the crowd. If anything, you're blending right in with them. But what if I decided to clean up the way I speak? A lot of people tell me, I've had people come up to me and tell me, hey, Chris, you don't cuss. I never hear you cuss. And I say, I don't need to. What if I decide to dress a little different and not blend in with the crowd? And people say, man, I really, I really respect the way you dress. I really respect the way you comb your hair. Man, this isn't the Chris that I used to know. What if we're just willing to serve God and be rebellious against Satan? you got to understand both kingdoms are out to win souls. But both kingdoms come with a reward. Jesus Christ gave his body for you so that you could inherit eternal life. That's what this thing's about. It's about getting people to heaven, pulling as many people as you can into the kingdom of heaven. When I, was, when I was out in the world, I had many friends. And once I got saved, once I got into church, I said, my friends, I'm going back for you. I don't want hell dragging you down. And I'll tell you what, I need to live for God as much as I can. And I need to be willing to share the good news with Jesus Christ, of Jesus Christ as much as I can. Because I have friends contacting me. They're not doing well. They're, they're stuck on drugs. They're stuck in financial problems. Hey, man, they say, Chris, I thank you, my friend, because you're the only person that believes in me. Nobody believes in me. Everybody's ready to put me down. Everybody, nobody has any confidence in me. I don't have confidence in myself. My children suffer because of me. And I say, my friend, God knew we were going to have this conversation from the moment that we were smoking weed together. God knew that today we'd be standing here, we'd be talking to one another, and that I'd be telling you about Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what we need to do is be in rebellion. Be in rebellion. Not be willing to listen to the authorities of hell. Not to be willing to listen to the rudiments of this world. To listen to what the world has to tell you. To listen to the propaganda that Hollywood has to tell you. You see, Hollywood, it's very entertaining and it's got movies and it's got things out there that are going to babysit your mind. But let me tell you something, I, if I'm going to babysit my mind, if I'm going to put anything in my mind, it is through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hell's out there to destroy your soul. 
I hope somebody leaves this place tonight different. I hope somebody leaves this place tonight saying, man, I'm tired of trying to be rebellious in this world. I'm tired of trying to impress people. Now it's time to impress God and put Satan in his place and show Satan you aren't worthy of my praise anymore. You aren't worthy of the glory anymore. I serve a better kingdom. I serve a kingdom that is going to give me peace and joy. All the sicknesses that I go through now because of you, all the pain and the anxiety that I go through now because of you, I'm not going to go through it anymore when I'm in the kingdom of heaven. I'm telling you somebody I'm talking to you youth I'm talking to you people of God somebody needs to be willing to get crazy for God somebody needs to be willing to tell somebody about Jesus Christ somebody needs to be willing to start a fire in their soul and say devil I don't care about you anymore this is about God I serve God I'm not gonna touch liquor anymore I'm not gonna touch heroin anymore I'm gonna serve God I'm gonna live for him he died for me and as long as I live I'm gonna die for him because in eternity he has a king him waiting for me he has good things awaiting for me I'm telling you he has good things for you he's planned a mansion out for you all you need to do is give your life to him today 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 is the day of salvation the book of Romans talks about not yielding your hands and your feet as instruments of unrighteousness but now it's time to put that same effort that you put into sin, to put that same effort that you put into serving Satan and use these hands and feet. Have the same motivation to do it for God. Have the same motivation to do it for your Savior. Amen. Those people in the world didn't take nails in their hands for you. They didn't take nails in their feet for you. But Jesus Christ did. Somebody ought to be on fire for this. Somebody still ought to care about God. And if it's going to be anybody, it's going to be me. The name of our youth group is called Riot. Revival in our time. It is rebellion against the kingdom of hell. I'm telling you, somebody ought to be rebellious against hell. Somebody ought to let God stir up their spirit. Somebody ought to be out to chase the reward. Somebody ought to be out to chase a blessing, to get something from God. And that's what we're here to do tonight. We're here to get something from God. Let's all stand. God has a mighty plan for each and every one of you. And if you're just willing to take hold on the seed of faith, take hold on the word of God, God has a better blessing for you than anything you were willing to chase. Amen. These altars are open if you want to pray. If you want to give it all to God, let's give him the glory tonight. Let's make hell mad. In the secret place of the Most High, it's where I abide. It's where I abide. More and more, I long to be by Your side. It's where I. It's where I. I desire You. All I do, my soul does for you, and I give my all to you forever. Don't my worship, don't my praise, give it my all, give it my all. Give it my